Come on, Tamsin, time to get up. Get ready. Okay, I'm going to explain what you need to wear for a safe, fun day skiing. The first thing you do when you get up in the morning is obviously going to have a wash and clean your teeth. Then I want you to put on comfortable, regular underwear. Leave the thongs at home. It's not about having a good looking bum, because by the time you put on a pair of salopettes, your bum will look the same as everyone else. Then the first bit of ski kit you're going to need is socks. We don't sell acrylic socks, they will give you cold feet guaranteed. All of our socks have got a good wool content. The first sock to choose from is a tube sock. It shapes your foot when you put it on. And the second sock is a technical sock. It's got extra padding where you need it in the shins, heels and toes. Then with the socks, we recommend you have three different colours. It's safe sniffing them to work out which ones you wore the day before. Three pairs more than enough, you can wear them on a rotation. Then working up the body, we come to the legs. The first base layer you're going to need is leggings. We sell ours 100% polyester, and I'll explain why in a bit. As you can see, we're putting them on above the socks. I don't recommend you put them in the socks or wear two pairs of socks. You should never double layer inside a boot, because you could get one of the pairs rucking up, and that will become a dent in the front of your shin. Then the next base layer is the top. We sell ours long sleeved. Again, they're 100% polyester. This will fit close to your skin. On top of this, you'll wear a micro fleece. A micro fleece is half the thickness of a normal fleece, but again, it's 100% polyester. They work technically together to wick the sweat away from your body. All the time that you've got warm sweat against your skin, you'll feel warm. But when it chills down, when you get on a lift or you're listening to your instructor, that's when you start to feel the cold. Next item is salopettes. This is your first bit of outer clothing. It's windproof, it's snowproof, but more importantly, it's waterproof. Choose them based on your size, small, medium, large. Pull them up so that they're around the waist. And then we have a little test, which is a lot easier to explain to boys than girls. We ask you to squat down so that your bum touches your heels. Now with the boys, we ask that they come back up with the same tone of voice that they went down with. If anything's changed, then we know they're too tight. With all the ski insulation, I call it the duvet effect. You're trapping the warm air that your body's putting out. And if you squash that insulation down, then it won't be effective for you. Next we come up to the hands. We've put on lining gloves. Put them on in the morning and only take them off to go to the toilet, have your lunch or put your sun cream on. Because fingers and ears lose heat really quickly and you'll have trouble regaining that heat. Also a lining glove allows your glove to slide on and off easier. I don't mind whether you go for a glove or a mitten. A mitten is warmer. Basically all your fingers are sharing their warmth in one big air pocket. Whereas with a glove it's one little air pocket per finger. I don't mind if there's a spare bit of finger at the end of the glove, you don't want your fingers close to the end because, again, they will feel the cold. I'm going to give you a free bit of advice now, sew a bit of elastic into your gloves. But if you don't find that convenient, we sell the Ski Glove Bunny. It's basically a little clip that will clip to any of my gloves without the need of sewing, and a loop on the elastic that goes over your hand onto your wrist. When these two are clipped together, if you take your glove off and you drop it, it's not going far away from you. You don't want to be dropping it off a lift. We've all done that before. Right, next item is a nice to have item. Everything I've mentioned so far is essential, but when we get to a nice to have item, I will point it out to you. This is such a thing. The idea is that when we get dressed in the morning, we look nice and smart, but when we've been waving our arms around, shouting help and get out of the way, your jacket can ride up and expose your wrist. Any exposed skin will feel cold next to the rest of you that's nice and cosily wrapped up warm. Next little item is a disposable hand warmer. Basically crack them open, give them a shake, they start to create heat, tuck them in your gloves and have nice cosy hands all day. One pair will last you a day. So maybe you think about buying a set for the week. And then we come to the neck. The first item is a neck ring. There's four items to choose from. The neck ring slips over your head and it's protecting your throat. But it could be windy out there, but even if it's not, by skiing we create a wind chill. And if you get wind on your throat as well as the cold air you're breathing in, you'll get a sore throat and you want to avoid that. The second option is a neddy. It's a bandana type material that will um, again fit over your head. But I personally prefer to sell this as a helmet liner because it needs to flatten your hair down so that your helmet can fit snug to your head. It also helps stop the helmet slipping at all. If you like the idea of both these items, we have the scuff. It's the Mike Fleece neck ring attached to the helmet liner. Because the two are attached, there's going to be no gaps around the back of your neck for any wind to go down. 
The fourth option is the balaclava. It only comes in black because we call it the ninja balaclava. Very popular item, still protecting your throat and it's acting as a helmet liner as well. Then we move up to the face. We've got a face mask. Certain schools will not let you ski in really cold resorts without these. You could be in conditions of minus 30 wind chill. It's protecting the last bit of exposed skin on your face. While we're on the face, most important bit of kit you can bring away with you is your sun cream. You're gonna get hit with a lot of UV rays. You're high up a mountain above the cloud line. Put plenty of cream on in the morning. Ours come with a lip balm in the cap. Put your lip balm on as well. Every time you get a chance to reapply, use it as a reminder and get plenty on. Ours comes with a handy neck string so it's always readily available around your neck. Next we come to the eyes. All my goggles and glasses are 100% UV protection, UV 400. It's a required level for skiing. On a nice sunny day there's nothing better than a cool pair of shades. But when the weather goes bad you will need to have a pair of goggles. The best instructor in the world can't get you home if you can't see where you're going. With the goggles, what we're looking for is the foam touching all the way round, especially on the bridge of the nose. Doesn't matter if the goggles are a bit wide, we need to see what's going on around us. If they're too narrow and they're touching the corner of your eyes, you're going to have a restricted vision and you're not going to be able to see everything that's going on. While we're on goggles, there's also a pair called OTG. It's for glasses wearers and it's a deeper cavity that will fit over their glasses. Then we come to the helmet. Crucial, a helmet fits correctly. It's got to fit snug with your head so that when you move it backwards and forwards, it moves with the head. If it slips with the hairline, we know it's too loose. And if that happens, it could knock your goggles or your glasses, and again, you won't be able to see or concentrate on what you're doing. So get a correct fitting helmet. While we're on the head, we still need hats. Uh, you're gonna stop at lunchtime, take your helmet off, a lot of heat will leave your head. But of an evening, we're going out for some great apres ski activities get the head covered up and get them ears covered up. It can be an outrageous novelty hat or just a bobble hat or a beanie. Now we come to our accessories. Uh, the first Velcro item is a boot carrier. The idea is you drop a tongue in each boot and it allows you to carry both boots in one hand. Write your name on it and identify them as yours because when we leave our boots in the room at night, if you've got a pair that are comfortable, you're going to want to identify them. Next Velcro item is slightly more important. It's a ski tie. It's got an area to write your name and again, choose a colour you can identify with. It's designed to wrap around the skis and keep them tied together as one. And the idea is that when you're carrying your skis, they don't open up like a pair of scissors. It's very important that you stick with the skis you're issued because your boot clips into the binding and the binding is a release aid that's set based on your height, your weight and your ski ability. If you get a pair of skis from someone else and your boot fits in them, and they're set wrong for you, they could be too tight or too loose. This is when accidents and injuries happen. So stick with the kit you've been issued and identify it. Next bit of kit is a water bottle. It's very important you keep hydrated. Our bottle is called a flottle because it's a flat bottle. You can fill it up in the morning, it's refillable, and when it's empty, you can roll it up. It also comes with a handy little clip that you can clip it to your clothing or your rucksack. Next accessories, really cool items to have, is the foam bungee. We're all going to get our phones out at some time, whether to take a selfie or, or a photo or to look at your phone. High chance of dropping it. If you do that, you don't want to lose it in the snow. Whereas if you drop it with a bungee, it's not going far. Right, next we come to our jacket. A jacket must fit correctly. Again, small, medium, large. Put it on and first of all, do up the snow skirt. The snow skirt's got a rubber band that will cling to your salopettes. And the idea is that it's stopping the snow or the wind going up the inside of your jacket. Also, when you fall over, you don't want any snow going in. And you will fall over, because if you don't, you're not trying hard enough. Once it's done up, put an arm out and check you've got a long enough sleeve so it meets your glove at your wrist line. Then you should be able to give yourself a bear hug and someone should be able to grab a spare bit of jacket at the back. Then we come to the Apre Ski Boots. Apre ski boots are fit for purpose. They've got an appropriate grip for walking around in result. They're snowproof and they're waterproof, but more importantly, they're warm. You're gonna be out there having snowball fights and you're gonna be in that deep snow. It's the best stuff. So you want appropriate footwear. Most silly accidents happen walking around result, more so than on the slopes. 
Lastly, we come to the bag. You see one in the background. This is the sort of bag we sell. It's a soft-sided bag. It comes with wheels, because I can guarantee no one's gonna help you carry a kit. Uh, this is a 90 litre bag, and it's more than enough room in here for one week's skiing. Right, we're now ready to get out on the slope, so let's get out there and have a safe, fun day skiing.